In this video, we're going to uh, define the idea of the circulation of a vector field and use that to build up the concept of the curl of a vector field. So the circulation of a vector field, which we'll denote by lowercase v, is uh, you can think of it as the amount of push that you get as you're going along a closed path gamma about a given point r and it's defined as the closed loop line integral uh, of this vector field along your path. So if you start out in some point uh, A and you go around any particular path and you come back, let's say you're going in this direction along your path, then the closed loop line integral is the same thing as saying you take a line integral of going from point A and back to point A along this trajectory. Okay. And as I said before, what this is measuring is sort of the, the amount of push that you get when you are in the presence of a set, certain vector field. So if you think of having a little paddle and you have some, it's in the presence of some vector field, V, then the amount that this vector field makes this paddle rotate is a measure of the circulation of the vector field around that point. This, this, the position of the paddle here would be your point R. And an important thing to note is the, if you have, let's say you have a loop like that, we'll say going in this direction. We'll call this path gamma. And suppose that you have a shorter path that you can take. I can't see that. Which we'll call gamma AB. It takes you from this point to this point. and then call this part, uh, say gamma one, and this part gamma two. Then the closed loop line integral or the circulation about the path gamma is equal to circulation around path gamma one, which will go from point B around this way, and then so it'll go in this direction, plus the circulation around the second path gamma two, which will go in this direction. And the important thing to note here is the path integrals along gamma one and gamma two uh, cancel out their contributions along the common path because for one of them you're going downwards and the other one you're going in the opposite direction. So they have equal but opposite values along this path. And we'll build up on this concept uh, in a future video where we uh, talk about Stokes theorem. Okay, so this line integral is around the second path. All right. Now, if we consider 
a, uh, a small surface element about our point R. which we'll call delta S. Our surface elements are a vector because we define a direction uh, normal to our surface. So about some point R. Then we define the curl of our vector field in the direction parallel to the normal to that surface. By the following expression. Okay, so the curl is essentially the circulation of your vector field per unit area about a point. So as the area shrinks down, you get to know how much of a push your paddle wheel will get at that point. And this little symbol just denotes that the path we take is the path that's enclosing this surface. So if we have, if our surface looks something like this, let's say this is delta S. This is our normal to that surface. And this is in the presence of some vector field V. then this path over here at the bottom of our surface, this is the trajectory enclosing that surface. So that's what we mean by, uh, by this symbol, D gamma. Okay, so from this definition of the curl, uh, we don't have a good way of calculating it for a general vector field. So in the next video, we're going to develop an algorithm to more conveniently calculate this quantity, which again is the circulation per unit area of a vector field.